Hey, welcome to Farming Live Australia. A few days ago it was officially spring and we've had a few new additions to the farm. I don't know whether it was to do with spring, but, and we've got some plans for different things we want to do now that it's turned spring in regard to growing our food. So hang around and see the new additions. Our old sow is developing into a pot-bellied pig and I'm pretty sure I know why. Watch this space, I think we're going to have an addition to the family. Here's the pig a few days later. As he keeps expanding, the gut's going to be dragging on the ground. I noticed the last couple of days she's starting to get a lot of milk. Surely it won't be long now. The pigs had six piglets. Everything was normal yesterday evening. And then overnight she's built this nest and had six piglets. Here's the piglets and the pig a couple of days later. Unfortunately she walked on one and we had to destroy it. Bit sad but I guess it's what it is. They look to be going okay, the little piglets. There doesn't look to be anything wrong with them. They seem to be going fine. This is the three biggest piglets we've got and I'm thinking that we're going to kill them soon. Although they're not really big, we really just don't need that many big pigs. They're about half grown and being young like this they'll be really tasty and probably fairly tender so I think we'll get rid of these three fairly soon. That will relieve the burden of feeding them all. The cattle seem to be doing good. We've got plenty of new little calves. We sort of have calves all the time. Not just in spring, but we seem to have quite a few at the moment. Mm. This cow here is going to have a calf in the next day or two. You got a very big bag of milk. The one bit of a negative we've had lately is that it's really starting to dry out. If we don't get some decent rain in the next month, we're going to be a bit short of feed for the cattle. We'll get through, I think, with no trouble, but things could get a bit tight. This big bird is known locally as a plains turkey, and we only see them in on our place when it's getting dry. Here we've got another little calf, only born in the last 24 hours. As soon as I ride around the place, and the cattle see me on the bike, they head for the yards. We don't have to really chase them or anything, although I am following them along. And not for any other reason other than just to have a bit of contact with them and also keep an eye on them because we are having so many calves at the moment. Well as the cattle in front of me, there's a mob behind coming along. These are all old girls we've had for years. They're pretty well trained. I think the bulls are feeling that it's spring, they're doing a bit of pushing and shoving and having a bit of a rassle. I don't think they're serious, but it could turn more serious if there's a cows in season, I suppose. I wouldn't like to get between them. This old cow is going to have a calf any day. You can see she's got a big gut on her. She hasn't got a lot of milk at the moment, but these old cows bag up pretty quick and then they have them. Last year I grew potatoes in some of my old thousand litre container shuttles that I had left over from molasses that were getting too old and they were just cut off. I do have a movie about how I make those gardens if you want to watch it. And I grew them basically in soil and when it was time to heal them up, I healed them up with old grass clippings. Didn't really fertilise them much. There was a little bit of biochar in the soil from previously. But the crop turned out quite good. I wasn't displeased at all with the crop. The only thing that I didn't like is that when it came time to harvest them, it was a bit of a steady, slow job, digging through all the dirt with your hands and getting the potatoes out. Pretty satisfying. It was a little bit like what I imagine gold miners must be like. You dig a bit and then you find something. So it was fun, but it wore thin after a while. A lot of you have probably seen people who grow potatoes in bags. And when I say bags, I mean like old feed bags, those poly sort of bags you get feed in. Or, and they seem to have a pretty successful harvest. So I'm gonna try 
a bit of a variation on that. And what I'm going to use is one tonne fertiliser bags. So they're a huge bag and I won't be able to utilise the height of them, only the size at the bottom. So I'm going to cut them off about halfway up the bag. That way I'll get two gardens out of one bag. And I'm going to tie a piece of rope to the bottom of them so that when it comes time to harvest, I can simply hook onto the bag with a machine and tip the whole bag upside down and just pick the potatoes up off the ground. I've got my seed potatoes. I bought them a fair while ago and they've grown eyes now. So I'm gonna cut the excess eyes off. I'm only gonna leave two eyes on each potato. I only have 10 potatoes that are actually seed potatoes. The rest of them are just store-bought potatoes that I've left to shoot. So we will get a comparison between the proper seed potatoes and the store-bought potatoes. You can see here this potato has got a couple of good eyes and all these little, little ones. I'm going to cut off all but the two big eyes. And after a few days when that, when those wounds on the potato scab over, I will plant them. This is one of the bags that I'll be using. And to give you an idea, Here's a normal size 25 kilo feed bag that most people use. So as you can see, it's a lot bigger and in reality it is a lot bigger than it looks there as well. The first thing I'm going to do is cut the bag roughly in half, which I think is about there. If you're going to do this, you really need sharp scissors. These are very sharp. In fact, I sharpened them only recently to do the job. So basically that's what we've got. We're going to fill this with dirt and straw and plant our potatoes in this and on the bottom here I'll tie a rope that'll hang out the side and later on when I want to harvest the potatoes I can simply pick it up with a machine and turn it over. We have the pigs on grass cuttings that we cut fresh every day and they don't eat it all and whatever's left forms their bedding and every few days we clean it out. This particular pile's been here for about three months and we're going to use that as part of the growing medium for our potatoes.
This first half of the bag doesn't have a very good point to tie it off on, but that'll be sufficient. And I just need a piece of rope hanging out far enough to get hold of it later on. Okay. Okay, so that's one done. I'll now put the growing medium in the bag now. This old grass and hay and manure and dirt, I've been preparing for a while, getting ready for this job. <laughs> so what we're doing, as we put the growing medium in, Pat's just making sure it's where we want it. It's all rotting down nicely. The dirt in this was mainly sand. I wanted a really light growing medium that would be easy to harvest the potatoes out of. The idea of the pig bedding was to add some nutrient and I will add some organic fertiliser that we make as we go along when I think it needs it. We have folded the bags back so that the top of the soil is in full sunlight. As we mount the potatoes up, we'll lift the bag sides up again. So here are the two bags that we've started on so far, and we have a lot more of these to plant yet. These potatoes I'm planting at the moment are, the st are some of the store-bought ones, and I'm planting them with the eyes up. I'll cover these over with more of the straw and soil. So there's 10 in that plot. I'm now gonna put the 10 proper seed potatoes that I've got in this plot. I'll now cover them over and we'll water them and I'll document the progress on film as I go. These are the sweet potatoes that we recently harvested and we didn't replant anything, we just left a few vines in the ground and the odd small sweet potato that, we, that was too small. And you can see that plants are starting to come again through the straw that we put there. I think no worries, they are going to grow again. 
We'll just see what sort of a crop we get out of it the second time round. Our chooks went off the lay in winter. We weren't getting many eggs at all. But we have started to get eggs again now that it's spring. And I think this will be about the last hurrah for these chooks. They're all just getting too old. They are laying nice eggs and this is an example of some of them. Thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Live Australia. We'll see you next time.